Hello and guten Tag. My name is Paula Höfinger and I am currently a fifth year medical student from the Medical University of Vienna. I had the opportunity to do a 12 week long medical elective at Hokkaido University in the departments of pediatrics, emergency medicine and neurology, each for four weeks. So to begin with, why did I decide to come to Japan? For me, embarking on a medical elective abroad holds immense personal and professional value, as I've always been interested in learning about different cultures and languages. The elective abroad allowed me to experience a foreign culture, getting to know new people, and learning about differences in healthcare systems and medical education. In choosing Japan for my medical elective, I was attracted to the nation's esteemed reputation for having a high standard and quality of education. The rich cultural heritage was another determinant determining factor in my decision to come to Japan. And, of course, Japanese food should not be forgotten. So now, let me tell you more about my home country, Austria. Austria is situated in Central Europe, with an approximate population of 9 million people. Covering an area of approximately 84,000 square kilometers, it is about 4.5 times smaller than Japan. Vienna is the capital of Austria. Notably, 34% of Vienna's residents are foreign nationals, contributing to a cosmopolitan ambience. The official language of Austria is German. The nation is divided into nine federal states, each with its own characteristics, but I will tell you more about that later. The historical narrative of Austria is dis distinguished by its role as a significant seat of the Habsburg monarchy, a dynasty that spanned centuries and had considerable influence in European affairs. This historical legacy has left an imprint on Austria's cultural, architectural and political landscape. As already mentioned, Austria is a federal republic consisting of nine federal states, known as Bundesländer in German. Each federal state has its own government and there is also a federal government overseeing national matters. In Vienna, or as we call it in German Wien, the capital, you'll find historical palaces, a law for classical music and a lively cultural scene. Lower Austria, or Niederösterreich, is known for the Wachau Valley, where vineyards and historical monasteries create a picturesque setting. Upper Austria, or Oberösterreich, has stunning lakes, mountains and a strong indus industrial history. Styria, or Steiermark, charms with green hills, vineyards and cozy towns, making it the heart of Austria's wine country. In Tyrol, it is possible to enjoy skiing, hiking and breathtaking mountain views, including the famous Alps. Carinthia, or Canton, is known for its crystal clear lakes. Salzburg is Mozart's birthplace. Here it is all about classical music and Baroque architecture, and the Salzburg festivals are hosted there each year. Vorarlberg is located in Austria's west and is known for its alpine resorts and outdoor activities. Burgenland has vineyards and rustic landscapes and plays a key role in Austria's growing wine culture. As mentioned earlier, Austria was home to the Habsburg monarchy. The sponsorship of the Habsburg dynasty and aristocrats at the imperial court created an excellent environment for musicians and artists. Many great composers were drawn to the city. Some of the most famous composers include Mozart, who is depicted in the picture, Beethoven and Haydn. Vienna, in particular, has been a central hub for these musical traditions. Concert halls like the Vienna Music Association, visible in the top left of the slide, and the Vienna State Opera, seen at the bottom of the slide, play a crucial role in showcasing and preserving Austria's rich contribution to classical music. We Austrians also enjoy dancing to our music. The Viennese ball season is a cultural tradition deeply rooted in Vienna's social calendar typically running from late November to the end of February, with the peak of activity in January and February. Each season hosts about 450 different balls. Waltzing, including the traditional Viennese waltz, is a central part of the Viennese ball experience. Attendees can enjoy live orchestras playing classical music, as well as other dance styles. Many balls feature elaborate opening ceremonies and debutants often make their debut during these events. One of the most famous is the Vienna Opera Ball, held in the building of the Vienna State Opera. Another important part of Austrian culture is Viennese coffeehouse culture. 
The Viennese coffee culture is such an integral part of what it means to be Viennese that UNESCO included it on the intangible cultural heritage list for Austria. The historical background begins in the 17th century. In 1683, Vienna faced a second Turkish siege, and after its liberation, a young Polish noble received 500 bags of abandoned coffee as a reward. Establishing the first Central European coffee, Korczycki initially served Turkish coffee, but Viennese patrons found its taste unappealing. To overcome this, he filtered and sweetened the coffee with milk and honey, introducing Viennese coffee culture. Over time, coffees evolved into inclusive meetings, inclusive meeting places for various social groups, earning Vienna's coffee culture UNESCO recognition in 2011. Waiters serve a glass of water with every cup of coffee, and the coffee houses are equipped with card games, newspapers, and pool tables. The typical coffee order of Viennese people is a melange. The melange is similar to a cappuccino, consisting of equal parts espresso and steamed milk, topped with froth, and it is often served with a small treat on the side. Now that you have a bit of an overview of Austrian Vienna, let me tell you more about my university in Vienna. The Medical University of Vienna, or Med Uni Vienna, was founded in 1365 and is one of the oldest medical universities in the world. Vienna is home to the first dermatology and ophthalmology clinics. Each year, about 680 new medical students are accepted to start their medical studies at this university. In order to be accepted, there is a big entrance test at the beginning, beginning of each summer that determines who will be admitted. Then, we study for six years to receive our medical license before we have our final exam, called the return week. In addition to that exam, we also have to complete and defend a diploma thesis by that time. My university is associated with the General Hospital of Vienna, or AKH Wien, one of the largest hospitals in Europe with about 1.5 million outpatients and over 100,000 inpatients per year. So, during my time in Japan, I had the opportunity to learn more about the Japanese healthcare system compared to ours in Austria. In summary, while both countries achieve universal access, Japan emphasizes mandatory health insurance, which individuals can acquire through employers or the national system. Austria, however, ensures universal access through a social health insurance system that mandates coverage for a basic level of healthcare services. The key distinction lies in the mechanism through which universal access is achieved. Furthermore, the healthcare system in Japan involves a mix of public and private providers, with hospital and clinics owned by both sectors. In Austria, public institutions, including public hospitals, play a predominant role, though there is also a private sector contributing to the system. Both countries have a somewhat similar cost-sharing system. In Japan, while the government covers a significant portion of medical costs, patients are required to pay a portion of the expenses out of pocket. This cost-sharing is usually set on a sliding scale based on income. Patients in Austria typically share the cost of healthcare, paying co-payments for certain services. The amount of co-payment can vary. Okay, now I'm moving on to the final part of my presentation, where I want to tell you more about doing a medical elective at my home university. Generally, medical training has a duration of six years. It consists of two years of basic courses, mainly covering basic sciences, physiology and anatomy classes. Following that, there are two years of medical classes and two years of clinical clerkship, which are split into our fifth year with six subjects and the final clinical practical year. During the summer, between university courses, there are 12 weeks of mandatory clerkship. In the clinical practical year, students in their sixth year work as learning team members in the departments of the Medical University of Vienna and the accredited teaching hospitals. Mentors guide them in their intensive clinical training. Generally, medical elective, electives are possible in the fifth and sixth years of university. However, only students from a cooperating university can do so in the fifth year. For international students not part of a cooperating university, medical electives are possible during our sixth year, the so-called clinical practical year. This can be organized as a so-called free mover. Applications for clinical practical year electives must be directed to the respective university clinics or accredited teaching hospitals. 
all details have to be agreed upon directly with the hosting clinic. If you have any further questions about this system, I've provided you with the email address um, of the international office at the bottom of the slide. And this is a list of all the teaching hospitals that currently offer electives as part of the clinical practical year. The University Hospital, which also offers these electives, is the General Hospital of Vienna. I've included the link at the bottom of the slide where you can find a comprehensive list with email addresses for the different teaching hospitals. If you plan on doing your elective at our University Hospital, the General Hospital of Vienna, you can find the email contact on the respective department's website. I hope this gives you a rough overview of the application process for a medical elective at the Vienna Medical University. So now for some final words, I have not only had the opportunity to learn a great deal on a medical level from all the doctors here, but also on a human level. Both I and the patients have been met with a kindness that is incomparable, and I have had the privilege of meeting many impressive individuals. I am confident that this experience will contribute significantly to my future career path and my personal development. If you have any further questions or need additional assistance managing your application for an elective at the Medical University of Vienna, please don't hesitate to contact me at this email address. I would be happy to help, meet and guide you when you come to Vienna. With that being said, I'm at the end of my presentation. Thank you for your attention.